Today at Switch and Lever we're looking into how to make a kalimba, or thumb piano as it's also often called. Before we get to it though, how about some history? Yes, history! The kalimba is what is called a lamellophone, which is a group of instruments which uses small tines which are plucked to create the sound, often attached to a resonance chamber of sorts. The kalimba is a bit of a tricky thing to pin down, as similar instruments have been made for at least a few thousand years and vary not only in shape and material, but also in name. General consensus is that it first appeared on the west coast of Africa around 3000 years ago. These days there are intricate kalimbas with hundreds of tines, as well as electrical kalimbas for those so inclined. In fact, the music you're listening to right now is straight out of a kalimba. Alright, you survived. History lesson is over. Today we're foregoing history to make a more modern rendition of this ancient instrument. First, let's start with the top and bottom of the kalimba. You could for sure use thin plywood for this if you were so inclined. I started out with a solid block of wood instead, cutting it down, jointing and planing it until the thickness was down to about 5mm and perfectly flat. Now is when you have to decide how big you want the body of your kalimba to be. Cut out a rough circle from the plain wood. Next we head over to the lathe. You need to mount the piece of wood in a way which is meaningful in your lathe. In this case a piece of double sided sticky tape worked great. Though for added safety the tailstock was also used to keep pressure on the wood, with a piece of scrap in between to protect the surface. Now, I don't claim to be a wood turner, so take what I'm doing here with a grain of salt. The point is though to turn down a shoulder with a specific diameter. Since we're going to do this twice, once for the bottom and once for the top, using a caliper to make sure you don't overshoot your diameter becomes very helpful. If the diameter differs between the pieces, your kalimba will end up with a tapered body and will be much harder to assemble in later steps. Of course, if you don't want to build a round kalimba, you can forgo these steps altogether and just build a traditional box using traditional box making methods. To make the cylindrical body of the kalimba, we're going to use the power of steam to bend a thin slat of plywood into a cylindrical shape. To get the steam in contact with the plywood, we need to build a simple wood steamer. It's basically nothing else than a couple of boards screwed together to fit onto a pot of boiling water. The boards have a hole with some wire mesh at the bottom and a large tube mounted on top to funnel the steam through. On top of the tube there is a plug with a couple of holes drilled through to keep most of the steam inside the tube without pressurizing the vessel. The heat and moisture of the steam will soften up the plywood slats enough to allow us to bend them into shape. Add water to the pot and bring it up to a boil. Insert the wood slats into the steaming chamber and allow them to steam for a few minutes. Watch your fingers as the steam gets very hot and the resulting wood pieces are also quite uncomfortable to handle. To get them into a cylindrical shape, take a cylindrical object roughly the size of the body of your kalimba and wrap the slats around that. Keep the wood in place while it cools and dries any way you see fit. In this case we used hose clamps which worked out fairly well but was a pain in the ass to get situated properly. Next time I would probably just use tape. Once out of the hose clamps, the radius of the wood turned out to be too big to fit the top and the bottom properly. This is because we did not account for something called spring back, which means that the wood will return part way to its original shape. The solution to this is that we need to overbend it a bit. As the slats are now mostly cylindrical, they cannot fit back into the steamer. Though, there is more than one way to skin a cat, and there is more than one way to create steam. Using a clothes iron set on high and maximum steam, we can reintroduce some heat and moisture to the slat and rewrap it around a tighter cylinder. This was only done to one of the slats, for reasons which will become apparent later. Now you can just cut off the excess plywood so the cylinder fits the top and the bottom perfectly. 
I first cut it down roughly to size and then used a disc sander to sneak up on the final measurement. The trick is, if you take off too little, it won't fit properly. And if you take off too much, you will end up with a gap in your body. This is where the shoulder we turn down on the top and the bottom will come into play. Add a bead of glue around the shoulder of the bottom piece and fit the bent plywood in there. This will give a bigger surface for the glue to stick to and hide the layered edge of the plywood. Keep it in place with some masking tape to make sure the edges meet properly. Put the top piece on but don't glue it and weigh the whole thing down to make sure everything is seated properly and wait for the glue to dry. Once the glue has dried thoroughly, you're ready to fit the other plywood slat. It's going to be glued on the inside of the body, and since we did not re-steam it, the spring bag it has will help it to push up against the inside of the kalimba. Some blocks were also made from scrap wood to help with the clamping. The faces of the blocks are rounded to make sure it gives even pressure all around the inside and doesn't buckle the wood. Make sure you spread the glue evenly over the surface and clamp it up good. As we know, there is no such thing as too many clamps. Also, make sure the ends of the plywood slats are offset from each other so the outer gap gets closed up good. While the glue dries, take the top piece and cut a hole through it. This hole allows the sound to escape from the resonance chamber. Without it, the sound would be quite muffled. You can use a Forstner bit if all you want is a round hole, though if you want to go a bit more fancy, there is nothing stopping you from using a scroll saw or like in this case, a laser cutter. Once the previous glue up has dried, take the top part and glue it into place. Like before, add some weight on top to hold everything in position. Again, once the glue is dried, all you need to do to finish the body is to fit your router with a flush trim bit and flush up the top and the bottom with the side of the chamber. A light sanding and it's all done. Of course, what we have now more resembles a drum than a kalimba. To proceed, we need to make a grounding bar to attach the tines which will create the sweet tones. The base for the grounding bar is made from a piece of walnut, simply sawn and sanded down to shape. It's then fitted into a milling machine where a broad groove is milled down the center and a couple of holes drilled for mounting. For the tines to have something else than wood to rest on, two thin grooves were also milled to hold two metal rods, one in the front and one in the back. Mark the position of the holes onto the top of the body of the kalimba and drill them to fit threaded inserts. As we're going to screw and hold something under tension to these inserts, we need to make sure that they're holding their position well. I added a bit of epoxy glue to make sure that they would not move out of place. To make sure that the inserts are going in straight and that you don't damage the wood when tapping them in, you can insert a screw into the inserts and tap on the screw instead. Next, we're going to make a rod which will both keep pressure on the tines, allowing them to be tuned and played, as well as holding the grounding bar snug against the body of the kalimba. The rod is simply turned down from brass stock on a lathe, intentionally going very slow because of the large overhang. The ends are then milled down and drilled with holes, matching the holes in the grounding bar and the body of the kalimba. The last items which need to be made are the actual tines. They need to be made from a springy material, obviously so they don't bend when you play them. Many people who make kalimbas use the teeth from metal rakes, and it, it does work great. In this case, we used a steel drain cleaning strip, which also turned out well. Cut the strip down to size and round off the ends, and it should be good to use. I suggest keeping the tines a bit long until after tuning, when you can cut them properly down to size. With all parts done, it's time to do a test assembly to make sure that all parts fit together as they should. Don't worry about tuning just yet, just make sure that everything fits where it should be. If everything fits, and why shouldn't it? You've been meticulous about building your kalimba, right? Anyhow, if it fits, we could move on to protecting our kalimba so it doesn't just last that one awesome jam session on the beach with all the babes, but for many years to come. Here we're using a durable polyurethane varnish to seal our kalimba. 
For best results, allow the varnish to fully dry between coats and give it a light sanding with a fine grit sandpaper between each coat. In the end, I applied five coats of varnish with a full day of drying between each coat. Once the final coat of varnish is dried, it's time for the final assembly. Screw everything together and screw down the grounding bar snugly. You don't have to grunk on it to the point of the wood breaking, but enough so the tines remain in place and can only be moved with some effort. You need this movement to be able to tune it properly. Also make sure the tines contact each of the smaller rods in the grounding bar. No part of the tines should be touching wood. Tuning a kalimba is very easy, but unless you have a great ear for tones and notes, I would recommend getting a tuner, or what I did, a tuning app for your phone. The process of tuning is very simple. Just move a tine in or out and pluck it. Make adjustments until all your tines are in tune. There are also many different scales you can choose for tuning your kalimba, and it varies also depending on how many tines you have. For this, I chose a fairly easy scale. Since it has 8 tines, a simple octave seemed to work out best. There are guides and communities online for tuning kalimbas, so depending on what you have, you might want to choose another scale. Now just learn some tunes and get playing! Ah, who am I kidding? You don't need to learn any tunes. Anything sounds good on a kalimba. Thanks for watching! If you like what you've seen, please subscribe and follow Switch and Lever on Facebook and Instagram. And while you're at it, why not check out some other videos from Switch and Lever? Until next time!